It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of May 1st, 1998. Uh, we had one, nine movies originally to look at, but I couldn't find anything for the other side of Sunday, so scratch that off the list. We still have eight movies to get to, a lot of films to get to, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just jump on and into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, Spike Lee's latest film, the, his latest collaboration with Denzel Washington, and that is He Got Game. So He Got Game is about a man played by Denzel Washington who's serving life in prison for the accidental murder of his wife and his relationship with his son, Jesus, played by Ray Allen from the NBA, who is the number one ranked basketball player in the country, uh, high school basketball player in the country. Uh, Jake's given one more chance to shorten his prison term when the governor and the warden takes a special interest in Jesus' fate. If, Jesus can, if Jake can convince his son to sign with his hometown school, the powers that may be... We visit may may be the powers that be may we visit his prison sentence. The catch: Jake has not seen Jesus since the murder, and Jesus wants nothing to do with the man. And he no longer calls his father. And there was this kind of period between ninety two's Malcolm X and this movie where Lee was putting out lesser fare. Certainly nothing necessarily bad, but definitely lacking compared to some of his other movies like Crooklyn, Clockers, Girl Six. They weren't bad movies, but they never lived to the full potential of Lee's early works. And Get on the Bus saw Lee return to form, but that seemed more aimed at a more specific audience than movies like Do the Right Thing and Malcolm X. Great movie, but it was made for a very specific crowd. With this movie, it's him back in full form that gave the, the, the form that gave him the success that he had early on in his career. This is a really good movie. I mean, first of all, Denzel Washington. I've said it before, he's our greatest actor. You know, you put him in a movie and already you're on the right path. And once again, he's giving a really solid performance. For an acting debut for Ray Allen, he's playing it pretty well here. Like, even people like Rosario Dawson, Mila Jovovich, John Turturro, Hill Harper among the cast. Uh, you also have uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Reggie Miller, Bill Walton, Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Jim Bowen, Rick Pitino, George Carl, Dick Vitale, all making cameos in here. Uh, they're all very engaging. The story overall is very well done. At about 2 hours and 60 minutes, it does run a little bit too long, but for the most part, it's another really solid and enjoyable Spike Lee film. It's a nice return to form for him after a couple of years of lesser works, but it has a good, it has a lot of good characters you really want to relate to, a good drama, dramatic edge, a well-done story. It runs at a mostly smooth enough pace, and like I said, it brings Spike Lee back to the form that made him what he was, what he's become is, I mean, this is not quite, it's not quite on the same levels as something like a Do do the Right Thing or Malcolm X, but it's the closest he's been since then at this point. But um, it's a great movie, man. I can't recommend it enough. He got game. Definitely check that one out. So with that said, on to the next movie, and that is Les Miserables. And this is not the one with Russell Crowe and Hugh Jackman. Believe me, if you, you'd be able to tell if Russell Crowe was in this one. And I'm Javert! Do not forget my name! We, we'll, we'll never forget your name, but we'll also never forget that horrible performance you gave in that movie, Russell. But uh, this is a completely different version, for the most part. Uh, this is a, one of the many adaptations of Victor Hugo's novel of the same name. This one is directed by Billy August and features Liam Neeson, Jeffrey Rush... Uma Thurman and Claire Danes, and as in the original novel, it follows the adult life of Jean Valjean, played by Neeson here, who's an ex-convict pursued by police inspector Javert, played by Jeffrey Rush. And you've seen the story before. If you saw the if you saw the the 2012 one, you pretty much saw this particular version. There are some changes made here, such as the names of secondary characters and places to make them more readily understood by an English-speaking audience. Uh, many details of the plot are faithfully reproduced, including the trial of Eris and the death of Gavroche. Um, uh, the the, the Thenander family appears only when Valjean redeems Cos Cosette. The Petit Gervais episode does not occur. Uh, Marius has no family backgrounds and leads the student revolt. Cassette is far more independent in the film, suggesting leaving the cloister to experience the outside world and challenges Valjean's control of her life. Uh, Valjean explains to his past to her directly rather than Mar through Marius. Uh, the film ends with Javert's suicide, eliminating the novel's extended denouement and including the wedding and Valjean's death. Um... It's been a long time since I've seen this particular version. I think I saw it when the 2012 one came out. Um, from what I remember from it, it wasn't bad. I mean, it has a good cast overall. I mean, you got Neeson, Rush, Th Thurman, and Danes. Uh, Lenny James is also in here. Peter Vaughn, um, uh, Christopher Adamson, Toby Jones. Just a really solid cast overall. 
And it does deliver a faithful adaptation of the story. I, th I thought it was pretty well done. It's kind of underrated. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the 2012 one, and I don't remember that one being that great. But then again, I have a problem with that director, the, ma the man who made that movie, Tom Hooper. Uh, he also did The King's Speech and also Cats, and I just don't like him as a director. So maybe that's kind of why I'm not, I wasn't that big of a fan of it. But, um, but uh, yeah, I think this version actually works very well. If I remember right, I think this is a better version than the, t the 2012 one. But like I said, it's been a while since I've seen both of these versions, so... My quick thoughts on that one. That's Les Miserables. So on to the next movie, and that is Patrick Swayze in Black Dog. Patrick Swayze was way too old to be making a movie like this. And it's funny because originally this was supposed to be Kevin Sorbo who was supposed to star in this. He actually got around $3, $3 million to star in this movie, and it was supposed to shoot during his hiatus with Hercules. And... Uh, uh, Patrick Swayze eventually took it over about two months after Swayze got – after Sorbo was supposed to start shooting in it. And uh, the plot of this is basically – it tells the story of a trucker and an ex-con who was manipulated into transporting illegal arms. And like I said, man, Patrick Swayze I think is a little bit too old to be playing this role in this movie. I think somebody like Kevin Sorbo probably would have made this a little bit better, not by that much because the movie itself is not really all that spectacular. Um it does have the honor of being one of those last action war movies to actually use practical effects, which I did not think that was the case. But seeing it, but seeing what came after this, I, I'm kind of surprised by that. But um, they do look nice. But other than that, though, that's pretty much all you could say about the movie that's kind of positive. Nothing else about the movie really stands out or anything like that. It's something we've seen done over and over again. It's been done so much better in other movies and past or present and... It just doesn't. It just doesn't work, and you really can't buy into it because of the fact that Patrick Swayze being cast in there, and I just like I said, I think he's a little bit too old to be starring in films like this. So, I mean, that's probably why I don't like it as much as some people do. Even though I don't know if a lot of people do like it, it has cult status to it. But other than that, though, I don't think a lot of people really can't, saw this movie and thought it was great. I mean, it's a film that kind of came and went, honestly, when you think about it. But um. Yeah, that's pretty much all I remember about Black Dog. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie we have here. Dancer, Texas, Population 81. So this is directed by Tim McCandless, who later gained more attention the following year by writing The Iron Giant. But uh, this is a film that he directed as well, and it's basically set around the, the fictional town of Dancer, Brewster County, Texas, where only 81 people live in this town, and follow their following their high school graduation, these four guys wrestle with the decisions to leave for Los Angeles, and the four guys include Brecken Meyer, Peter Fashionelli, Eddie Mills, and Ethan Embry. You also have Ashley Johnson, Patricia Wedig, uh, Eddie Jones, Alexander Holden, Sean Weatherly. It's a film that's very reminiscent of something like The Last Picture Show, the Peter Bogdanovich movie with Jeff Bridges and Civil Shepard. Great movie, and the and Texas Phil is actually a pretty good sequel that came after that. And I feel like that's what Tim McCandless was trying to do with this movie, and I think he did a pretty good job with it. It's a very underrated little gem. Not a lot of people really talk about it all that much, but it's a surprisingly effective film, and it works because the chemistry between the four friends works so well. Brecken Meyer, Peter Fischinelli, Eddie Mills, Ethan Embry, I think they work off each other very well here, and they create a very good storyline that you really want to get invested into. Like I said, it doesn't have as much attention as something like The Last Picture Show did, but it's definitely something that's worth checking out. A very underrated gem. If you, if you can find it out there, definitely check it out. You will not be disappointed by it. Um... So with that said, on to the next movie, and that is Still Breathing. So you have this con artist played by Joanna Going in Hollywood and puppeteer Fletcher McBracken played by Brendan Fraser in San Antonio who have the same dream with links them to each other. And they tra he travels to L.A. to find her, but at first she resists him. It goes back and forth between Los Angeles and San Antonio and San Marcos. You see the cast in there, Brendan Fraser, Joanna Going, Anna M Ann Magnuson, Angus McFadden, Toby Huss, uh, Lou Rawls. Um, I've never seen the film, so I don't really know if it's any good or not, but Brendan Fraser is a good actor, and I think he's proved in many other movies, so... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being good. That's pretty much all I can really say about this one. So let's go ahead and move on to the next film, Stephen Fry in Wild.
the story of Oscar Wilde, genius poet, playwright, the first modern man. Of course, Stephen Fry plays Oscar Wilde here, and the self-realization of his homosexuality causes Wilde enormous torment as he juggles marriage, fatherhood, responsibility with his obsessed love, Lord Alfred Douglas, nicknamed Bosey. After legal action instigated by Bosey's father, the enraged Marquis of Queensberry, Wilde refuses to flee the country and was sentenced to two years of hard labor by the courts of an intolerant Victorian society. Um... That's pretty much all I know about this movie. I've never seen it before. Um, the director of this is not the best director. Even though Tom and Viv wasn't a bad movie, um, it's got a good cast to it. Stephen Fry, Jude Law, Vanessa Redgrave, Tom Wilkinson. I mean, can't go wrong with those people there, but that's pretty much all I know about this movie. So anyway, on to the next film, Shooting Fish. It's like pictures. What's he doing here? Was it Scouts tonight? Comes a comedy about two con men. Brilliant. Who were hard to beat. But an easy target for love. Shooting fish. So you have Dan Futterman and Stuart Townsend as these con artists. One is a charming American who runs for some characters in the States, and the other is an English techno nerd. And during one of their scams, selling a voice recognition computer, they hire this woman played by Kate Beckinsale as a secretary for the job. And the romantic triangle begins to appear, and she's not a secretary but a student, and her marriage with this rich person is upcoming. Um... It's really all I know about this one because I have not seen this one. But um, an early film role for Kate Beckinsale, Stuart Townsend, Dan Futterman's also in here as well. Peter Capaldi from Doctor Who as well. That's pretty much all I got for you on that one. I haven't seen this one, so I can't say if it's any good or not. But um, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Let's wrap it up with the last one we have here. Go now. A film that was originally made in 1995 as a TV movie, but after the film Monty's success, why not put one of the stars in there? Robert Carlyle, also coming off of Train Spotting, too. He plays an MS affected construction worker and soccer player living in Bristol with his girlfriend and struggling with the onset of multiple sclerosis. Um, directed by Michael Winterbottom, has Sophia Okanito from Aeon Flux. Again, that's really all I know about it. I, I'm pretty sure they put this out primarily because. Of Robert Carlyle's rising stardom, starring in Train Spotting and then The Full Monty, and then see if he can have another success here. I don't know anything about this movie, so I don't think that plan really worked out all that well. But, um, I mean, you never know. You never know. It could actually be something interesting, but, um, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll check it out, but I don't know anything about it right now. So let's go now. So with that said, that wraps up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time we meet, well, I only have four movies to look at next time, including Deep Impact. We also have Woo, Little Men, and Artemisia. So four films to look at next time around. So we should have some, well, some interesting conversation on a couple of these movies next time around. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.